sales scripts. Oh, they're so bad, Kim. I don't want to have a sales script. I don't want to sound like a robot. I don't want to put off my potential customers. If you're thinking that, mm -mm -mm, this video is not for you, or maybe it is. So I want you to watch, understand, and learn. I'm going to cover off why you should have a sales script, what that looks like, and exactly how you could go out there and create one for yourself. Now, first off, I'll share with you a little chat I had with uh, one of our clients, Joni. She helps people in timeshare sales. And I was having a conversation with her about this exact topic. She said, Kim, I don't use a sales script. I teach people to go off script because I sound too salesy. I was like, ah, oh, that's interesting. She's an NLP trainer as well. I was like, that's an interesting belief that you have. Why do you think it's too salesy? Right, and there's no such thing as too salesy. What's like, oh, sorry, you're gonna make a billion dollars. That's too salesy. No, that's not the case. It's like, why do you think that? Right, because here's the thing that you need to remember and to why a sales script is so important. It doesn't actually matter what you say in the script, but if you don't have a repeatable process, or it kind of does, but if you don't have a repeatable process, how can you scale your business and how, you can, how can you expect to get a repeatable outcome? Right, think about that for a second. How can you expect to get a repeatable outcome and test and measure something if you don't have a process? So almost like in your mind, the word sales script, take it to sales process. Think of it like that. If you don't have something that you can repeat every single time, then it doesn't really matter what you do. You won't be able to get the same results. It's like, oh, last Friday I had five calls and I got five deals. Okay, great. What happened on Monday? I had five calls and I got zero. What was different? Well, I don't know. I just had a different conversation. If you have a different conversation every time, it's never going to be test testable and measurable. Let's imagine that you're going to a gym, right? And normally you have a program, maybe there's five things that you do, maybe the muscle groups you do, legs, back, shoulders, chest, arms, you train your whole body. Imagine if every time you went to the gym, you just did something completely different. Go, okay, today I'm gonna to do boastful ball squats. Oh, today I'm gonna to do bicep curls. Oh, tomorrow I'm gonna to run on the cross train, that looks like fun. Oh, what about, I'm gonna go for a swim. Oh, I wanna play a game of tennis. If you're trying to track, measure, and increase, if you want guns like these, right, if you want the muscles, you've gotta have a repeatable process to allow you to go through and do that every time. And if you don't measure it and test it, you're not gonna be able to see how to improve upon it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you, we're about to head out of the office, I'm gonna give a little bit of training to old man Christy over here, who's just outside in the other office. I'm gonna teach her the strategy and the process. And just so you know, so you're aware, right? It's gonna be the initial conversation. We're gonna go through exploration. We're gonna go through agitation and then ascension. They're the four steps that we're gonna cover off on in the what and the how of using your sales script. So let's hit the road and let's go. So, Chrissy, tell me a little bit about some of the things you're facing when it came to the sales you're doing at the moment. So, I guess that it's that I'm having these conversations and there's things that are coming up like, you know, can, I need to ask my partner or I, like, I don't really have the spare cash at the moment or like I'm actually already doing Facebook ads and I'm having a lot of success and really I just need to take it to the next level. So I'm coming up with all, you know, I'm getting all of these, um, you know, some of them are objections um, or just like different paths that people are taking in the conversation and I don't really have something that I can follow to be like, okay, they say this and then I know what to lead in with, you know, like I know the questions to ask them to get them to think further around, you know, what is it that they actually need and why did they opt into our stuff in the first place? clearly an underlying issue they're having a problem um, so you know I don't have that process that I can follow to like make sure that the conversation goes the way that we want it to for sure and so normally there's there's four steps that you have and you can have a script but I like to use a process like a lot of people I find if they go straight into a script they feel like it's too robotic and they stumble over it themselves and I think if there's four key areas that you can do like one of our clients Alex Moscow is great at this. He has his whole congruent closing um, process, but I'll give you like an outline of four areas I think that are really key to hit to ensure that you basically overcome objections before you get to them, but also that you get the best result possible. So first is the intro. Like you always wanna build rapport and, and like you said, asking them to say, cool, why did you register? Like why did you actually register? Why are we on the call today and how can I best help you? And then also tell them how it's gonna roll. 
because you need to be the leader when it comes to a sales conversation. Yeah. So you need to be leading them and going, cool, so this is how it's gonna roll. I'm gonna ask you, we're really gonna delve into three areas. I'm gonna ask you this, this, and this, and at the end of that, if we can do something together, great, and if we don't decide not to, that's cool as well. So next is the exploration, and that's really where you wanna delve into. Cool, what are you doing now? What's worked for you? What hasn't worked? And why do you want to do this now? It's always a good question because it's like, if you're just registering, like there's, even if you say, oh, I just wanted to find out more, there's a reason why you decide to do that now versus six months ago, six months into the future. There's always a pressing reason. And then also finding like what that would mean to them to get that answer. So let's just say, okay, I wanted to do it to achieve 10 more grand, 10 grand more a month. And I always like to do what I, I know what I call, it's like one of my good friends, James taught me, which is the why three times. So it's like, cool, I wanted to make 10 grand a month. Great, why is that important to you? Or 10 grand more a month, why is that important to you? Uh, because then I will be able to spend more on my ads. Cool, why is that important to you? Well, then I will be having more people come into my business and um, you know, we'll be growing. Cool, and why is that important to you? Oh, oh flat stick in it, flat stick in it. So excited about talking about sales. Um, and then finding out finally, it's like, oh, because then I'll be able to put my kid into a good school. Oh, so that's the actual reason why. Yeah. Great, so now, and then when it comes to any objections, well, it's like they've given you the ability to overcome it because really it comes down to you wanted to help your, um, put your kids in a private school. So the investment is really superfluous. It doesn't really matter, right? And then you like, then what you want to do next, so after you've done some exploration, you found out this information, then you want to agitate it. And when I mean agitate it, it really is, it really is just chucking like the cat amongst the pigeons and going, cool. So what's gonna happen if you don't achieve that? You said you wanted to do this. What's gonna happen if you don't make that extra 10,000 a month, 100,000 a year, whatever it might be for them. What's gonna happen if you don't achieve that? And really delving into and agitating that and it's, you know, like twisting the knife a little bit and finding out, it's like, cool. Obviously there's gonna be great pleasure attached, but what's the pain? Because yeah. people are motivated by one of two things, pain or pleasure, and not everyone's the same. So you can find out the aspirational, the inspirational, and what they want to get, but also go, cool, what's going to happen if you don't do that? If your kid doesn't go to private school, why do you want to have that happen? Like, what's going to be the outcome of that, yeah. right? And you want to agitate it a little bit, stir them up, um, like, not purely just for fun, but just so you know the outcome and going, cool, if you're motivated by pain or pleasure, you see, like, you know, if you, there's a hot stove there, I tell you, don't touch the hot stove. If you touch it, your hands are going to come off straight away. You want to help them be able to jump away from that and push towards their goals. And then the final part is the ascension. It's like most people lose the sale by not asking for it. I don't know you're used to asking for it, but a lot of the time, that's the problem where they go, cool, oh, that's great, thank you. I'm just going to check with my partner. And it's like, well, hang on a second. You just told me all the reasons why it's so important to you and now you've got to ask your partner, like this is a little bit of problem, uh, overcoming objections process, but you just now f suddenly told me that you've got to um, ask your partner. Do you ask your partner for everything? Like do they own half the business? If so, they should be on the call with us. Yeah. But if not, it's like, well, do you ask them if you can go to the bathroom? <laughs> like what's going to happen? You're going to tell them that it's, you know, what, like $2,000, $3,000, $5,000 and they're going to tell you you're not worth that? Mm. Like, you've, that's where you've really got to agitate them a little bit and go, well, if everything's true, what you've just said, there really shouldn't be any objection here. It should either be a yes or a no. And really, all we are is not really salespeople. It's just, we're like uh, decision assistants, <laughs> right? That. So it's like, they have to, we have to assist them in making a decision. It's like, I don't really mind if it's a yes or a no. Like, I just want you to get off the fence for once. Yeah. Like, stop, stop being so, um, stop being so indecisive and just decide. It's like if, you, if it's not right for you, cool. If it is, we'll work out a way for us to work together. Yeah. But if not, like, let's not, let's not beat around the bush here, right? And it's the old, like, you know, I find that it comes up so often, send me an email yeah. with all the details. Like, what's your biggest kind of, um, you know, what would you go back with when they say that? Because obviously, you know, we, we, all, we all do that when we really just want to, like, get the person off the phone, right? So yeah. if someone was to say, send me an email, Really, that's their way of just trying to get you off the phone, yeah. And what's a good Depen way to depending? I just say, cool. Like, what do you want the email to say? I honestly thought that you were going the wrong way then. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were about to die in the race. But what is no. this? It's the RAC and Telebus, obviously. Wow. Um, that's oh no driver. Ah, cool. Um, Take that down, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like no worries about designated driver. We're sorted. Um. 
but yeah, that's what I would say. It's like, cool. What do you want the? What do you want it to say? Yeah. So you want an email? Like what? Exactly. But then asking that, yeah. it's like, cool. So if I put all that information in email, what will happen then? Yeah. And and as well, you you got to be comfortable in calling people out, mm. and go look. Let's just say you called me, right? But like, look, Christy. Like that's funny because you know what? Like that's exactly what I say to people when I just want to get them off the phone. Yeah. Like I just tell them send me an email and I never do anything about it. Is that you? And then they'll probably be like, ah, ha, ha, yeah, that's me. Yeah. It's like cool. Like okay. just tell me no. Just like tell me no then. Like, that's the thing. You really just want a yes or a no. Like you want. You don't want to have to deal with like being annoying and following them up. Like you don't. I don't want to be that person. I just want them to decide. And like you said, it's cool. Ooh, don't hit anything. Girl, that's what we have revision cameras for. Um, yeah, like you, you just you just really want to know, can I help this person today or not? So then I can move on to the next person that I can help. Like, yeah, and that's what I would say to them as well. It's like, look, I'm not here to, to muck around. Like, if you want help, cool. If you don't as well, that's cool as well. Like, I have no problems if, if you just wanted to have a chat with me. Mm. However, let's not waste either of our times. Like, I can send you an email, but exactly. we both know what's yeah. going to happen next. It's just going to waste my time and it's just going to go, like, in your deleted items. Yeah, exactly. So then it's kind of a waste. So that's what I would say. That's why you want to use that process, the IEAA, and that's really how you can craft a script and an outline and a conversation mm-hmm. for you to get better results into the future. So yeah, like I, I really just want to focus more on having like an organic conversation. Like I don't, as you said, want to sound robotic in any way. So if I just go and make a bit of notes around each of those four points, then I can kind of um, control the conversation more um, depending on Exactly, 100%. Awesome. So guys, if you got value from that, now we're down here at the beautiful South Perth. You know, Corey wants to take some selfless shots over there. We're going to help him out, right? All I want you to do is like if you liked the video. Comment, tell me a little bit what you liked, what you want to see more of, and of course, subscribe to this bad boy so you get every video that we record first before anyone else. Until next time, we'll see you soon.